What's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again with another LaunchBox tutorial. Today I'm going to be covering updating your RetroArch cores and swapping older cores out for newer ones that have been recently released. In the past I have done a video on fully updating RetroArch and if you're interested in updating your older RetroArch build to the latest version I will leave a link for that in the description. But in this video we're going to be covering updating the cores alone and swapping out older unsupported cores for new ones. Now recently, there have been a couple cores that were removed from RetroArch. If you already have the core downloaded, it's still going to work. But unfortunately, there's no update for it. Performance will never increase, and new features for that core will never be available. So the first thing I want to cover is updating cores, and then we'll get right into one of the main ones that I use a lot, which is Raycast. It's recently been removed from RetroArch and replaced with Flycast. So in order to update your cores, you do not need to fully update RetroArch. You can be on an older build and it'll still grab newer cores as long as you update the core info files, databases, and the core itself. So I'm going to open up RetroArch here. From the main menu, we're going to choose Online Updater. And I always like to update my core info files and databases. So I'm going to go to Update Core Info Files. You have to be connected online for this to work. It's going to extract it. Now we're going to update databases. So now that we have both of those updated, we can go to Core Updater and find a core that you use a lot and update it from here. One that I use a lot is the Beetle Saturn core. And I'm going to find it in here. I'm going to press Enter on my keyboard or A on my controller. It's now updated. It replaced the old core with the newly updated core. Same thing with Pico Drive. And I usually go through and update my cores about once a month, but these cores are updated every week. I mean, sometimes every day. And you can just go through the list, find the cores that you normally use, and update them from here. And that's basically it for updating the cores. But like I mentioned, one of my favorite cores for running Naomi and Atomus Wave has been removed from RetroArch. It's already set up inside of LaunchBox for me. I do have the old core ready to go and I can still play them because I have everything in place. But like I said, that core can never be updated now through RetroArch. So I'm going to be stuck with using Flycast, which is basically just a renamed Raycast core. But if we go in here and download the new Flycast core, I'm going to grab the one for Dreamcast Naomi. There's also a version with Windows CE support, and I do want to make a dedicated video on this because it's really awesome. But we're going to be working with the Dreamcast Naomi Flycast core. I'm just going to download it here, and I'm going to back all the way out. We're going to go back to LaunchBox. From my drop-down menu, I want to swap out my old Raycast core with the new Flycast core. So from the drop-down, I'm going to go to Tools, Manage Emulators. I'm going to find RetroArch, Associated Platforms, and I'm going to find Naomi and Atomus Wave because that's what I used Raycast for. Here's Sammy Atomus Wave. Raycast underscore Libretro. And I also have Sega Naomi. Raycast underscore Libretro. I'm going to swap this out for the new Flycast core. So right here, the name of the core, I'm just going to double click. It's going to bring a drop down menu up. Since I've already downloaded the new Flycast core, it will be populated in the list inside of LaunchBox. So all I need to do is find Flycast underscore Libretro. Same thing with Sammy Thomas Wave. And that's it. I'm now going to be using the Flycast core for Naomi and Atomus Wave instead of the old Raycast core. Kind of the same thing here with Sega Saturn. There's a few cores available, but I prefer using the Beetle core, which I already have listed here. But if you wanted to use the Yoba Sanshiro core, make sure you download it inside of RetroArch through the core updater and choose it from the drop down menu here. We'll click OK. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. We really appreciate you watching. I've had a few people ask me about updating the cores inside of RetroArch, so I figured I'd go ahead and make a quick video. If you have any questions at all, let us know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.